Hi and welcome to another video. Thank you very much for joining me. Today I'm going to be answering the question, how do you use an ultra wide or super wide angle lens when you're close in and confined into a certain area? I've recently done videos on how to use telephoto lenses, specifically on um, getting the detail in the landscape. I'm now at the other end of the spectrum because I've done the telephoto end, I'm now going to the super wide angle lens. And stay tuned until the end as well because I've got a bonus one I found after I'd done the waterfalls, the most amazing woodland scene. So stay tuned for that one and I'll include my composition and also the image in the gallery. And what I'll do with this is also talk a little bit about camera orientation. So going horizontal or vertical mode to capture and use the best of this lens. And this is the first time I've been to this location. I'm absolutely, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I have mountain bike, I can see the mountain bike trails, but I've never been down to the river and the waterfall that I'm gonna head up to. If you're seeing this, it's actually lived up to its promise, but actually at the moment from where I am, it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna head on up the trail. My walk up to the waterfall is quite a short one. It's about one and a half kilometers. It starts at Tuffin Gladys, which I believe translates from the Welsh to English as Glad it's a small holding, which is quite a cool little place actually. It's really beautiful. So I'm gonna I'm heading up, up the trail anyway now. Some beautiful old walls on my left. I think what I'll do is I'll come back here in the future um, and make another video. It's absolutely beautiful. And who knew there was gold in them there hills? There are the odd derelict mine. You can see the entrance is really small, like two feet across, you know, 60, 70 centimeters across. Who on earth would have worked in those? And there's lots of signs now saying that you can't prospect. And there are small waterfalls and cascades absolutely everywhere in this wood. Oh, I've got my first view of the waterfall. Hold on, I'm gonna spin you around and we'll take a look at it. It's hidden through the trees at the moment, but we're, uh, we're heading there. So let's get up there and get set up. And I've arrived at the waterfalls now. There are actually two. This is Pistol Cane. This is the one that I really want to do on the lens. There is another waterfall just there that I've previously shown you on the path. It's only, they're only what, 200 meters apart probably, and there's a confluence of the rivers, the streams just uh, a little bit downstream. I'm gonna go to the second of the falls first, and then I'm gonna come back to here to really get the detail. I'm gonna try and use both as an example of the ultra wide angle lens. I'm at the first waterfall. This one isn't ideal for what I want to talk to. I'm gonna to go to the other one in a minute. I'm just gonna get a couple of images here. The front cascades at the bottom. Let me spin you around very quickly. The cascades at the bottom are absolutely lovely, making a lovely landscape. There is, and the reason this one doesn't work is because what I really want to be is down there on those rocks there. But there is a hydro station there that blocks access to those rocks. So that's that's a bit of a bummer, but never mind. We, we live and learn. The next waterfall, I've already scoped it out and it looks absolutely perfect for what I want to do. So here's a couple of images. One of the front cascades here with the main falls and the cascades in the foreground. At this first waterfall, I've only really got one composition with the ultra wide. My composition here, using my 10 to 18 at around 12 mil, is gonna consist of the trees at the top followed by the main waterfall. I've got this pipe on the left on the hydro power station, which I'm gonna crop out. And then we've got some beautiful cascades coming through. And then we have got the waterfall right in the foreground. And we've got these lovely little plants just bounding it in the foreground as well. Absolutely lovely composition using the power of the 10 to 18. And please remember that whilst you're watching the video, if you find anything inspirational, educational, um, if you enjoy just uh, the photographs, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Your support for the channel is massively appreciated. And this is the path that leads down to the foot of the waterfall or as close as we can get it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this if the weather was really persistent rain, but it's uh, dry today, one of the few driest days we've had. And as you can see, it's absolutely stunning. What a great location. So I'm now down by the base of the falls. I hope you can uh, hear me okay. I've just come down this precarious set of steps. It's a bit mossy. I would seriously not recommend doing this 
in the any kind of rain or heavy slippery rocks today there's enough traction that you don't slip and slide um, but I, let me spin you around and I'll show you my composition so my composition is going to consist of the main falls coming down across the top half of the screen and then coming right down into the ravine at the bottom perfectly I would be over here somewhere I'd be over here but there's no way I'm going to go in the middle of the river. I've done that with my camera before. But this is a brilliant, the way it cuts the diagonal from left to right and then cuts the diagonal from right to left and exits at the bottom of the screen. And you can see my technical data here. I've got it one sixth of a second, F16. The water at the bottom is flowing so fast, it just is a white out, a milky mass, if you have too slow a shutter speed. So one sixty sorry one seat is catching it perfectly I only have the polarizer on as well I haven't bothered with an ND filter for this that was slowing it down I did try it it's slowing it down too much but what it also catches is these small bits on the waterfall are absolutely stunning and then I'm going to capture this and then I'll put it in the gallery in a second and then I'm going to go back up there for another vantage point and then I'm going to go up to the bridge for a third vantage point to show you the power of ultra wide or super wide. And my second image from this one before I go up to the path again and the bridge is um, just getting the foreground rocks in the image as well. The foreground rocks have a lot of moss and a lot of features on them. So I just want to capture those and make sure that we can frame that image. So I've actually got two images from this particular location. I'm now balanced precariously on the path that leads down to it. I'm on one step, the camera is on a higher step. And you can see my composition here. Um, I've got the waterfall coming in on the kind of, from the center really, leading into the right and third. But what I've got is this tree framing it lovely on the left hand side, which I really, really like. So let's capture that. Let me just show you the info that I've got on this. So you can see I've got it at 160, sorry, 16th again at F16. Too fast, anything much faster than that, so let's capture that image. One of the real powers of these lenses is really to get super close to the foreground, but also to capture really great height for scale. So that's where the horizontal, and I think that the, the wide horizontal one works brilliantly because we've got the balance of the tree. I'm now going to rotate it to vertical so that you can see the difference that it makes. And I'll include both of those in the gallery as well for you. And you can see the difference flicking it to horizontal makes. We've got the waterfall coming around, creating a fantastic arc, which we kind of had on the landscape. But what we've got now is we've still got the tree as well. I've actually got it at this full 10 mil right at the bottom end of the lens. So it's creating this great arc. I may in post just do a little bit of trimming of the top and the bottom just to trim the image. I'm up on the bridge now which overlooks the waterfall. You can see the waterfall in the background just there. Let me just spin you around very slightly. Got the tripod on the maximum extension which is about my height. So I, you know, with the geared head, absolutely love it. And you can see my composition here. Let me get rid of all of the information for you. You can see my composition here. Got the waterfall coming in. Unfortunately, there is a tree in the way. I can't get rid of this. If I move further to the right, there's a tree closer in. But we do get the concept of the waterfall. It's hitting the pool at the bottom and it's flowing through. I love this log slightly above bottom third, but that's fine. We don't, we don't need to stick to rules. Rules are there to be broken in my view. So I really like this composition. So I'm gonna capture some of these at probably between half a second and one sixth of a second again. But um, which does remind me of a couple of quick tips whilst I'm capturing this. Because at the moment I have got it on around about F, um, sorry, 16 mil. But if I bring it all the way to 10 mil, I actually start to get the tripod feet in the bottom of the image. So one thing to be really careful of, that's a great tip, just double check your composition that you don't get the tripod feet in. The other one, at between 10 and 12, if you stack multiple filters, I'm using just the polarizer at the moment and I'm still getting half a second because it's quite, quite dark underneath the trees where the waterfall is. Um, if you actually go down to 10 mil, just be careful if you're stacking that you don't get vignettes in the corner. 
Certainly some will not give you that vignette, even if you stack two, but most will. So just be aware of that. So tripod legs and vignetting from multiple stack filters are two big tips when doing this. So this is the composition that I found on the way back to the car, which is a real surprise, but this is where you can only get catch this with a wide angle. I've got it at 10 mil at the moment. You can see how I've got the leading line of the wall. I've got a stream meandering through the image, whoops. And I've got these trees and the scene is so green and the, the fallen leaves as well. I mean, we're in spring, they must've been here quite a while and the greens are absolutely amazing. I'm actually gonna try, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take three images, focus stacked, front to back, and I'll do a focus stack merge. And what this image here represents is the real depth of field that you can achieve with a wide angle lens from front to back, as well as the space from left to right and up and down. Absolutely opens the landscape up, no matter how confined it may appear to the eye. So let's take a look at the gallery now that we've captured today using the ultra wide angle lens. Um, I will be back here, it's absolutely stunning. I will do a video in the future of the features and how to capture images on the trail here and along the river itself, because it's absolutely fantastic, but there'd just be too much for this video. And today I really want to focus on the ultra wide angle lens. Anyway, please, if you found it useful, hit that like and subscribe button. And here's the gallery coming up right now. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and also check out these videos next. Thank you very much for your time in watching this video and remember to pick up that camera, get out and get some practice. That is what photography is all about. And until next time, thank you and see you soon.